here's the deal. What's the deal? Did Bob Toll really say now is not the time to buy a home? Early reports that he did sent housing stocks swooning. Trouble is, the Toll Brothers chairman and CEO didn't say it. Bob Toll himself here to put the fuss to rest once and for all. He joins me now on the phone from Pennsylvania. Bob, thank you for coming. Hi, Neil. Why would I say such a thing? I had the same reaction. I had the same reaction. I um, think it was a fellow sitting to my left, uh, the economist for Moody's. Okay. Who, who uh, suggested that. Now, uh, he looks great and uh, not as a ventriloquist, so I don't think he threw it over on me, but uh, I assure you that I would not say such a thing, and I don't believe it. What did you think when you heard that, that you apparently had mistakenly? <laughs> I hadn't heard other than a phone call in my office when I got back here from Washington uh, and it was asked that Fox News said, did I say? And I haven't heard it anywhere other than from Fox News uh, through my uh, staff. Okay. Um, what I thought was a mix-up. Yeah, yeah. Here is exactly what you said, which in, in fact validates what you just told me, Bob. This is from earlier today. Let's listen. They may not have stopped falling yet. Certainly, I'm going to say that this is the best time to buy a home. You've got, you've got sellers on the ropes and, and, and buyers so reticent, you're going to kick yourselves for not scooping up all those condos in Florida. All right. Uh, so, again, the read from you, we, 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 we could have some bouncing around here to go, but are you saying that you think the worst is behind us? I, I don't think the worst is behind us in terms of... Uh, future prosperity for some home building companies but i do think the worst is behind us uh in uh housing price drops uh it's it's almost impossible to pick the bottom just as it is to pick the top and uh, uh the best the best traders uh and investors uh, don't try and do that they they wait for what seems to be obvious down periods and obvious up periods and trade on those uh highs and lows and it would seem to me that you've taking an awful lot of juice out of the market. And so if you're contemplating uh, purchasing a home at all, this might not be a bad time to uh, take the plunge. Nevertheless, you do see pricing depreciation potentially continuing? I, I couldn't say that I didn't see a potentially pricing, price, depreciating, uh, conti price depreciation continuing. Uh, but I don't think anybody could say that. Uh, you know, there's always the possibility that prices can go down further. Uh, but they're they're pretty well discounted now um, in new housing. Um, I think used I think used housing um, might have a way to go yet because the the used housing market is run by companies of one generally. You know, there's one principal or a husband and wife who have decided to sell their home and they will or they won't take and so you've got five million of those decisions being made primarily by teams of two and they've been more reticent to drop their price the new home market i believe has dropped uh, substantially more and and that's why i'm suggesting now is not a bad time to uh, make the move that's an interesting distinction i've heard it framed that way um let me ask you about this treasury plan today bob that uh, to help out strap borrowers, uh, uh, effectively kind of pushing the lenders into letting them extend those teaser rates. What do you think of that? Well, I didn't hear Paulson's plan because, unfortunately, I had to leave and get back to work, and I thought I'd read it in the paper tomorrow. So I'm a little, I'm a little behind you. Uh, I think that any plan has to be very careful in its definitions of who we're going to help. Uh, if you have a house that's underwater uh, because the mortgage amount is greater than the value of the home, and let us suggest that that differential is obvious. And no matter what plan you come up with, it's going to be very difficult to convince the mortgage the mortgageor uh, to continue to put money into something that's underwater. So, in your in your business, the toll homes for those not familiar generally are upper income. Uh, very nice, very fancy. Some would argue expensive, although prices are not as expensive as they were. Thank you. I, I, is there a sense, Bob, that you are getting beaten for a subprime situation that rarely relates to your customers? I'm sure there are some subprime borrowers among them, but certainly not a lot. Well, yes and no. Uh, no the vast majority of our, uh, overwhelming majority of our purchasers are prime purchasers. 
um, a prime prime mortgage uh, borrowers. Uh, however, our buyers have to sell to their buyers, and their buyers have to sell in turn to their buyers, and so goes the daisy chain down to the bottom. Right. And when you knock the knees out of the bottom rung, everybody falls down the ladder. So we're not immediately impacted. We have no problem with jumbo uh, loans, for instance. Uh, we don't. Uh, we do about sixty percent of our business in the in the conform rates of Fannie and Freddie, four seventeen. Um, would you have, be Would you be open, Bob, to raising those limits if some have espoused on Capitol Hill, bring them over the four hundred seventeen thousand, maybe bring them closer to six hundred or or any I figure higher? I think that's necessary because the four seventeen rate is chosen on the basis, uh, or not chosen, but is is. Uh, made on the basis of an average. Well, what do, what good does it do the California market to be priced against an average? I mean, their homes are much more expensive than the homes in, in Texas or, or uh, in Cincinnati are. And so are the homes in New York much more expensive uh, than the homes are in, in Atlanta um, or, or in um, uh, Austin. So uh, you can't. I don't. I don't think you should work these things by average. But if you're going to, I think you want to at least put the price high enough to cover some of the busiest and most important markets in the country. Um, I know you're through your quiet period right now, so I won't. I won't touch on business particulars at all. But I do want to sort of step back and, and from an expert's point of view, what are you seeing nationally? Is it fair to say this is still a national issue, or more pronounced in what were the hot markets like California? the Northeast, Florida, that sort of thing. Now, well, I, I spoke to that three weeks ago, and I'll speak to it again December the 6th. But, but I think it's obvious to answer the question. I, I'm on safe ground to say that, no, I think it is a national, uh, a national problem at this point. Uh, I can think of only one market that's fairly decent right now. And what would that be? New York. New York. New York City? Yeah. New yeah. York City. Well, New York City and... Um, Hoboken and Jersey City, which are right across the river, and so, then some suburbs that feed down into the New York metropolitan area. But we haven't seen the effect of uh, bonuses and lack thereof in the New York market yet. So we're going to have to wait and count on, count on December and January showing us what impact that will have. Finally, Bob, I appreciate you taking the time, but because your customers tend to be more upper income, uh, more investment savvy, if you will, do you think that hurts you? in a time like this because they're, they, they tend to be extra cautious as a group collectively? That's probably the case. Uh, I, I, would, uh, I would go along with your hypothesis. Interesting. Robert Toll, thank you very much for joining us and clarifying what, boy, single-handedly, you had, you had kind of like a, a Greenspan day, right, a Bernanke day, what you said moved markets or didn't say. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> All right. Very Thanks, good Neil. seeing you, Bob Toll of Toll Brothers in Pennsylvania. So what is the long-term impact on our economy as this housing drama plays out? Let's bring in Jonathan Honig and Tracy Burns and Crash Proof author Peter Schiff. Peter, uh, Bob Toll seems to be saying, it, you know, yeah, it could, could get a little worse, but I don't want to put words in his mouth. Not necessarily a lot worse. Well, you, know, you, you, you argue... A lot worse. Well, I mean, first of all, Bob Toll, look at his position. They've got a lot of inventory. They want to get rid of it. I mean, it doesn't make any sense for him to be out there telling people not to buy his products. But from my perspective, you know, everybody now will agree that loaning money to people who can't pay you back, who have no down payments, who lie about their income, who, who rely on teaser rates, that all this stuff is not a good idea. And so these lax lending standards are coming to an end. But the problem is they produce these artificially high home prices. And so we can't go back to traditional prudent lending standards without going back to traditional pricing. And real estate prices around the country are still much too high. Homes are unaffordable using traditional financing. So price have to go down. They have to come down a lot. How much is a lot? Well, in a lot of these bubble areas, like uh, down in Florida and California and the Northeast, prices are going to go down by 40, 50 percent. Even and from here? Well, 
the new home prices have come down somewhat, but still the existing homes, the big inventory of homes that are on the market are still only down maybe five or six percent from peak prices. Mm. And, you know, and he mentioned, Bob Toll mentioned about the chain. You know, the reason that people were able to buy these expensive homes is because they could sell their home to a subprime buyer who was able to pay an inflated price. But once you take that away, then people don't have the down payments to buy a new home because nobody in this country has any savings anymore. What do you think of that, Tracy? that there could be much further way to go. Well, to his point, and I, I try very hard not to agree with Peter on most things, but the prices do have to come back down to mean. And then generally from mean, we're going to have to dip a little bit more if, you're gonna, if you believe in the whole notion of peaks and valleys. So we haven't even hit our valley yet. So yes, they will come down. But I think well, that Well, how people, much is down to you? Well, definitely more than what we've seen thus far. Five, well, six percent is probably not enough. It well, needs to come down more than okay, that. Okay, Jonathan. Now, Peter was saying in some hot markets, still another 40 percent plus to go. What do you say? Well, I think it's very popular, uh, possible, Neil, especially in the speculative markets. But the flip side of this coin is you need some place to live. And I think, frankly, it is always a good time to buy a home that you can afford. Uh, now, now for my, you know, I'm an investor. So from an investment perspective, real estate isn't really a hot asset class right now. And I, I don't see that turning. I mean, even though the prices have come down, there's really no indication that they're ready to kind of turn around and head back up mm -hmm. again. But in terms of, you know, a young couple just starting out, my feeling is there's some terrific bargains out there. Find a home you can afford, even if rates tick up half a percent or a percent and uh, enjoy a part of the American dream which but, is home ownership. Hey, Jonathan, but Jonathan's but right. You can rent people, it. Jonathan's right. People need to be reminded that if you have good credit and money you can still get a house and you can get a house with a good deal. Like I would want to go buy one of Toll's homes right now because well, he'll probably throw in the granite for you. But you have to remember that you can you can have a place to live without buying. It's something called renting. I'm doing it myself and it makes a lot of sense. I mean I've got plenty of cash. If I thought homes were cheap I would buy them. But the problem is I look at what it costs me to rent them and it's so much cheaper uh, it still doesn't make any sense so a, a young couple should look around at all the homes for rent okay. and if they could rent a much nicer home without any of the oh, headaches all right, guys they I, can I do want that. to bring in a housing and personal finance expert Lynette Calfani Cox she's the author of your first home you've heard maybe some of this Lynette that, that we're not out of the woods yet do you agree with that no, I definitely don't think we're out of the woods yet. Um, if you look at all the statistics, it points to lower home prices in 2008, more foreclosures on the horizon. The inventory overhang that we're seeing is still has an issue that has to be dealt with. So, so if I I'm a first-time home buyer, how would you advise me? I think it is a great time to buy. I mean, you should take advantage of those opportunities right now. Well, I have a guest who's saying, Peter Schiff, he's been pretty good lately. You know, um, we have a lot of very hurting markets that are going to hurt some more. Yeah. I mean, the question is, do you try to absolutely time the market? Nobody's going to be able to pick the bottom and so say So you that. agree with Bob Toll, who says, you know, you might not catch the bottom, but this will come back as a great time. Absolutely. And the fact of the matter is, we've already seen prices drop to the point where you can get fabulous bargains, especially if you're a first-time buyer or even a move-up buyer. If you can get a mortgage, isn't that the problem now? Well, tighter lending conditions, no question. That's so those younger people have to put down more than they ever did before. Than right? they ever did before. But you know what else? The fact is there are programs out there designed specifically for first-time home buyers through cities right. and nonprofits, et cetera. Yeah, so. People have to look, though, at, at, at the cost of owning versus the cost okay. of renting. You know, a lot of people were buying Peter, homes. I don't mean to jump on you, but that break's coming whether you and I are talking or not. <laughs> I want to thank you all and a thought for you. Maybe Bob should have gone into video games. I'll explain after this <laughs> or are we getting this Hugo Chavez thing wrong so he loses a referendum but he hasn't lost his job he's still got that right through 2012 which is why you won't find me whooping up how about my panel including Jonathan Honig Tracy Burns and Peter Schiff Jonathan what do you think of that he's still there well, for a while yeah yeah, he is, Neil. And I mean, in Mahmoud, I mean, he, he's friends with Mahmoud Ahmadinejad and every other worthless dictator under the sun. Uh, but I, I applaud the Venezuelan people. I mean, Hugo Chavez has turned that economy into a complete basket case. It is the worst economy in South America with 20 percent inflation and a completely worthless currency. So uh, there's maybe a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. But you're right. We've got Hugo to deal with for uh, several more years now. All right. Let's talk about other things we might have missed today. Peter Schiff, what do you think? Well, I, I, on the same line, I mean, I looked at what happened, the news that came out of Gazprom last week. It didn't really get a lot of play in the media, but, you know, you've got Russia, the largest exporter of natural gas and, uh, and oil in Russia, uh, saying that they're considering uh, no longer pricing their products in U.S. dollars, but in Russian rubles. And, you know, as the world continues to move away from U.S. dollars, you know, this threatens our phony prosperity. We've had a free lunch in this country. We're able to pay for our imports with dollars. And I think in a few 
few years, we're not going to be able to do that. We're going to have to pay for our imports like everybody else with exports. And it's a lot tougher uh, when you have to actually produce something uh, to consume. All right, but we are getting a lot more exports out precisely because of that weaker dollar. You don't well, see that continuing? Well, we're going to have to send a lot more. We still remember we still have a trade deficit of fifty-five plus billion dollars per month. That's a long way to bringing our trade into balance, which is what we're going to have to do if the world no longer prices uh, their merchandise in U.S. currency. All right, Tracy, what are we missing? You can argue that we had the so-called Santa Claus rally already. You know, a lot of times. Uh, coming end of the year, the last couple of weeks of December, the market rallies. And there's, there's a lot to be said about the fact that we had it last week. I think the market is tired in many ways and might just do this like even keeled, you know, uh, even flow through the rest of the year with a little bump here and there. But there's no real reason why we should rally. All right, so from here on out, it kind of stays. I think it's going to, yeah, just because it's confused. We're waiting on so much. There's so many unknowns. We still don't know the whole effects of this housing credit crunch thing. We're trying to price these mortgage-backed securities. You know, I think the deal with E-Trade and Citadel was actually somewhat of a step in the right direction. Granted, 27 cents on the dollar isn't all that, but it's something Citadel offered uh, to buy E-Trade's right. uh, mortgage-backed securities for 27 cents, basically, a piece. Citadel took a chunk out of that big hedge fund, demand that the CEO resign, he did. So you think more of this is what we'll see, and that's potentially the way to solve the mess? Well, you know what? It's a starting point. And, yeah. and to Citadel's you know, credit, they, they started low. I guess arguably they could have started lower, but it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily help things go lo going forward, but at least it gives us a place to start with all these things. Peter, you said earlier in this broadcast another 40% walloping to go in housing. Uh, is the kind of stuff that Tracy addressed, that is, uh, outside players buying you know, stakes in these players or mergers of these players, is that the kind of closure you'd like to see? Well, by the time we have closure, it's going to be a lot worse. You know, it's you know we're going to be every it's, we're not going to be arguing about whether or not we're in a recession or going into recession. It's, we're all going to know we're in a recession, and it's going to affect all sorts of credit. Remember, uh, the mortgage, the subprime mortgages. This is the tip of the iceberg. It's a problem for consumer credit in in general. Mortgages, auto loans, credit card loans. We've simply borrowed too much money from the world. We can't pay it back, and the world is just starting to understand this. So we're going to have a huge repricing of our IO. Use and there's going to be a lot Peter, of problems. Peter, can I ask you this? You're a brilliant, you know, strategist and 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 a, and a great read of the world. But knowing your point of view, how do you not slash your wrist every morning? <laughs> well, I mean, it, look, I mean, first of all, I've, I've been able to help my clients profit a lot from from my perspective. So you know, I'm, but I'm they, when they're around you, they just oh, but, you know, look, Peter, look, just because I know that there's problems, it doesn't mean I'm going to resign myself to do nothing about it. At least I'm going to help people, help people prepare for what's happening, uh, so it's not going to come a as a surprise. Party, do people avoid you, or do they say, you know, Peter, he's smart? Well, you, but... you assume I got nothing to talk about at a cocktail party, Absolutely but economics. Not. Absolutely not. I'm not assuming any such thing. Yeah. Well, next Jonathan, time you have I'd one, assume that. Jonathan, next time, I'd assume that. <laughs> well, next time you have one, invite me. We'll see. We'll see what what happens. That would be a party hardy crowd. Um, Just make Jonathan, sure to invite Jonathan too. There we go. That would be a party. Jonathan, what do we miss, my friend? Uh, well, Neil, you know, despite the fact that smokers now trail uh, NAMBLA members and pedophiles as the most hated constituency in the country, these tobacco stocks are actually uh, smoking this year. I mean, the tobacco index, which is TOB, is up uh, north of 15 percent. And a lot of the individual components, like Philip Morris, uh, um, Altria, or Altria Carolina Group, hmm. BTI, are up 20, 30, even 40 percent. And you see so, that continuing? Uh, yeah, I mean, again, it seems like the more uh, these anti-smoking advocates try to regulate and, and hurt the industry, the higher these stocks go. A lot of them are at all-time highs, and it's really one of the strongest areas of the market I can find right now. All right. Uh, words of wisdom all, I want to thank you. Tomorrow, some political words of wisdom from Michael Reagan.